Let's settle this once and for all. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Now, if you watch my previous video where I compared the D75 to the FT5, you may remember that I made an off-the-cuff statement where I said that the battery life didn't seem to be uh, quite as good on the Kenwood. And that was really with absolutely no testing other than some just daily use of the D75. Well, now we've got much more concrete evidence. Let's dive into it and take a look. Now, before we go comparing batteries, we do need to take a look at the power output of each radio. Should one of those be putting out 7 watts and the other one only putting out 2 watts? Well, that's going to skew the results. So, I connected each radio up to the MFJ849 meter. By the way, huge shout out to MFJ for sponsoring today's video. I set the Kenwood radio to 144.390 and went ahead and clicked the PTT button. As you can see, we got 3.36 watts out of the Kenwood. I repeated this exact same test with the FT5 and you can see that we were getting 3.39 watts out of the FT5. So there's not a dime's worth of difference in output between the two radios. The next thing we need to account for is the different battery sizes. So the Kenwood D75 has an 1820 milliamp hour battery, while the Yezu FT5 has a 2200 milliamp hour battery. We're going to take those two, uh, or we're going to take that difference into account when we start looking at the results. Now, I set each radio with the APRS modem on, the Bluetooth off, and the GPS to on. On the other band, I set a local repeater and set the volume to roughly 25% on both radios. Then I just set them on the desk and let them run until they both went dead. Now, one thing I noticed right away, although both radios were set to smart beaconing, the D75 was transmitting two beacons for every beacon that the FT5 was transmitting. Now, looking at this page here, you'll see that the voice alert uh, wind link comment out there on the right-hand side, that is the comment set in the D75. The one that just reads wind link space underscore three, that's the FT5. So it's easy to keep the two radios separated. I'm assuming that the difference in that is just a difference in the smart beacon algorithm of each radio. But I knew this wasn't going to be a fair test because the D75 is transmitting twice as much as the FT5. Still, I let it play out because I wanted to see the runtime using smart beaconing. And the reason I wanted to do that is because smart beaconing is my preferred method for running APRS. If you're not real familiar with the different beacon patterns, uh, smart beaconing is based on speed of movement. So if you're traveling at a slow rate of speed, it will not beacon as often as if you're traveling at a fast rate of speed. So the faster you travel, the more often the radio is going to beacon when it's set to smart beaconing. Now, I assumed, uh, since they were both sitting on the table, that this would be equivalent between the two radios. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. So I started this test at 6.04 in the morning, and as you can see, at 13.51 was the last beacon we heard from the D75 radio. And then at 18.05 that evening was uh, the last beacon heard from the FT5. So we ended up with an 8-hour runtime, or 480 minutes, out of the D75, and then we ended up with a runtime of 12 hours or 720 minutes for the FT5. Now, to keep this as apples to apples comparison as we possibly can, what I did was I took the milliamp hour rating of each battery and divided that by the total number of minutes that uh, the, the battery lasted. What that gives us is how many milliamps the, uh, the radio is consuming each minute that it's running, and therefore taking out the difference in battery sizes. So when we run that math, we've got, uh, for the D75, we've got 1,820 milliamp hour battery. We divide that by 480 minutes. That gives us a consumption rate of 3.79 milliamps per minute. 
We do that same math again for the FT5. We've got a 2200 milliamp hour battery, 720 minute runtime. When we divide that out, we get 3.05 milliamps. So as you can see, the Kenwood is consuming more milliamps per minute than the FT5. But the test results could be skewed because remember that D75 is transmitting twice as often due to the difference in the Smart Beacon algorithm. Now, one of the rumors I had heard was if you cycled a battery seven times from completely full to completely dead with the D75, you would get a little bit better battery life out of it. Now, that's something I definitely wanted to test out. So before we uh, jump to the other head-to-head -head comparison, let's take a look at those results. I put a brand new battery on the D75 straight out of the box and fully charged it. Then I went ahead and turned that radio on using the exact same settings that we had used in the previous test so I could see how long that new battery would last compared to the one that had been cycled seven times. That test started at 5.10 in the morning, and as you can see, the last beacon we got from the D75 in this case was at 12.56 in the afternoon giving us roughly an eight-hour runtime again, which is exactly what we saw in the previous results, utilizing a battery that had been cycled seven times. So I don't think that cycling that battery seven times really gives us any improvement out of the battery. Now, I wanted to go back and run this test once again, and the primary reason was I wanted to get these two radios to beacon as close together as I possibly could. In the first test with that Kenwood beaconing twice for every beacon of the Yezu, I didn't feel that that was a fair comparison. So I set both radios to auto beacon every five minutes and started the test yet again. Now here's where things got really interesting and this was just user error. If you look at menu item 512 on the D75, you'll see something called the decay algorithm. And I totally did not understand what this setting was. And I'll give you a quick breakdown and then I'll leave a link down in the description below where you can read a little bit more about the decay algorithm. It is a really cool feature, but in this case, it was not something that I wanted turned on. The decay algorithm basically says if you've got the beacon set to auto, this doesn't apply to smart beaconing as far as I can tell, but if you've got the beacon, the auto beacon set to say every five minutes and the position of the radio based on the GPS coordinates doesn't move, it will not auto beacon every five minutes. Well, not it, not completely anyway. I believe it's the first three five minute cycles, it will go ahead and send out the auto beacon. But then it looks and if the position hasn't changed, it starts to lengthen out the period between beacons. And this is really cool if you're sitting in one spot for a long period of time. It's not just sitting there, A, flooding the APRS system with unnecessary beacons, because if your position hasn't changed, you don't really need to beacon as often. Um, but then also it doesn't drain your battery by sending out unnecessary beacons. So it is a really cool feature. However, for this particular test, I didn't want it to use that decay algorithm. So I did go ahead and turn it off. Taking a look at the APRS packets recorded on APRS.fi, you can see that I got exactly the results that I was looking for. Again, the comment section that has vAlert in it is the D75, and the one that has winlink space underscore 3 is the FT5. And I was getting a one-to-one -one beacon rate between these two radios during this test. So this test started at 1126 with both radios set to auto beacon every five minutes. Taking a look at this set of data here, you can see that the last beacon heard for the D75 was at 1908 in the evening. And this slide here shows the last beacon heard from the FT5 was at 2327. So this time around, we got about seven and a half hours out of the D75, and we got 12 hours out of the FT5. 
if we run the same math as before and divide 1820 milliamp hours by the runtime of 450 minutes of the D75, we find that the D75 is using 4.04 milliamps per minute. Now looking at the FT5 with its 2200 milliamp hour battery and dividing that by the 720 minute runtime, we see that the FT5 is only consuming 3.5 or I'm sorry, 3.05 milliamps per minute. So the D75 is consuming roughly 30% more from the battery each minute. And if we gave the D75 a 2200 milliamp hour battery, we could expect somewhere around 544 minutes of runtime or about nine hours. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.